The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Hey, feeling good, Lewis. I want to wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving weekend. The old cowboy is taking his burrow out in the desert and taking a week off for the slowness of the holiday week. And we'll be back with you uh, right at the beginning of the month, which will be December. So that'll always be a good one. Anyway, let's try to make this a good show today, folks. Uh, ask any questions. We hopefully will have Tom Hugard as our guest today, uh, depending upon his time. It'll It'll be on hopefully around in the, at the break. That's what we're looking for. The first chart that I posted in here today is the German DAX. And as you can see, it has the potential to go either way, as all markets do, with the bias being a little bit to the downside. Because if you remember from yesterday's charts, you know, we did have a major ABCD butterfly pattern form up there at 13,300. And we've had a pretty good break, you know, from that level. Let's do a quick review. We understand today from the news that Ray Dalio of Doubletree Partners has put a one billion dollar bet that the stock market is going to go down. I don't know if he's right or not, but if we take a look here and we review some of this stuff that we've talked about uh, earlier in the week, because uh, some of it has happened and we want to pay attention to it. Uh, we had this big butterfly pattern up here at uh, 28,000 in the Dow Jones, and we're trading about uh, well, several hundred handles below that right now. So that pattern could be completed. If we close below, uh, which we're not going to today, of course, but 27 7,500, that would be a weekly reversal, and that would be unusual, but uh, that probably won't happen for two reasons. One, we're into the holiday weekend almost, and the second thing, it's a Friday, and anything could happen. But uh, supposedly, he put a $1 billion bet on the market. Uh, uh, he, Ray Delio did that this morning. It was on Bloomberg and CNBC that he made a $1 billion bet that stocks were going to go down. And, uh, you know, whether that's true or not, Marshall, is anybody's guess. We've seen this before from, uh, oh, my gosh, there's been so many guys. Uh, Warren Buffett is a master of doing it. George Soros, when he's in the public, which he doesn't like to be anymore. It would also be, there it is, a Bridgewater, it was Bridgewater Associates. Thank you, Tommy. I thought it was Doubletree. Doubletree's that other guy. I can't remember his name. Uh, that doesn't make any difference. Anyway, uh, Bridgewater is the... Uh, the uh, what you call it uh, is Ray Dalio, and he's he's pretty good. You know, he's in the he's in the top six or seven. Nothing like Jim Simons, of course, but uh, that's neither here nor there. And let's take a look here uh, at the uh, New York Stock Exchange Index uh, because it is another one that uh, you know is showing that there should have been some type of a top coming in here this week. And so far, you know, we've had a little bit of a sell-off, but nothing to write home about. And then if we look at the uh, Nasdaq Composite, which was the big one, and it's also sold off a little. All of them have, have sold off based on, you know, these three drive to a top patterns and butterfly patterns that we look at. So that's neither here nor there. And of course, the last one, of course, is the uh, the spy, the ETF for the cash S and P 500. And again, you see the three drive to a top pattern. Those are those really dark. Um, uh, numerals in blue, and uh, those are the ABCD, and then with the red swings, you see the butterfly that is formed uh, in between. Those are very unusual patterns to see them lined up like that, uh, ducks in a row, folks. You don't see that very, very often. That's why I think it means something. The other thing that means something, and David White has mentioned this here on the program before with me, is the fact that the, the program that they have for TFNN, looking at these patterns, David says he's seeing many, many times times, uh, uh, somewhere between 10 times normal patterns coming up than he ordinarily sees. These are butterflies and Gartleys uh, that are happening, and uh, that's that's telling you that there must be a lot of things happening for his program to be, you know, showing so much, and the larger program that we're looking at when we look at some of these larger patterns are telling us that, yes, there might be something that is uh, coming to this uh 
show near you in very short order. Let's take one other look, and that is another one is the Dow Jones Transportation. Now, this is the weekly chart. Now, if you'll notice here, this Dow uh, Transportation's to topped in August of last year, folks, and we're just making a 78% retracement. Russell, uh, uh, oh my gosh, hold on just a second here. Uh, when this, when you have the Dow divergence like this, this is usually indication of something very, very serious. Now, if we look at the Dow Jones utilities, this is the one that's interesting, and this is a weekly chart that goes back over the last five years, and you're also going to see the one, two, three drive to a top pattern, and then you also see that same three drive to a top pattern in the uh, beautiful colored uh, light uh, purple uh, uh, triangles that you have there where you see the A, B, C, D, and the one, three, five, one, two, three, four, five pattern that you line up there. So that's what we're looking at uh, coming into this week. And so far, the market has been down. You know, we had a high of uh, 31.35. We're trading about 20 handles under that right now, a little more than 20 handles under that. So whether that means very much, it's really nothing. It's very, very no volatility at all. In order for this market to really to really scare anybody, it's going to have to have one really bad day. And we haven't had a bad day in this thing since uh, when was Roosevelt uh, elected? That was in 46. Anyway, it's uh, it's really something. It uh, We'll watch it uh, very, very close. We've had several questions about uh, news. And folks, <laughs> I, really, I really stay away from the news part. I know you can't stay away from all of it, but uh, when you're a technician, you have to believe that what you're seeing on the chart is what's being implemented in the markets. And that's, that's and believe me, that the trouble that I get into, let's repeat that, the trouble that I get into is when I start putting my own, uh, what do you call it, an opinion into it. That's when I say, oh, this could be that or this could be that. I know you have to make a decision on some of this, but you, you just got to be really, really flexible and, and let the charts, you know, try to tell you that, yes, that could be it. Because uh, if we would have been really strong on Monday, this all these patterns would have failed for sure, but the fact that we're down, there still could fail. All the all it has to do now is to go up and uh, you know make new highs, and you could be looking at another hundred points higher uh, in the S and P, and that would be a thousand points higher in the Dow. So uh, that could very easily uh, come to fruition if uh, if that is the case. So uh, remind yourself of that. Uh, one of the other questions that someone asked about is they're, they're trading too much during the day, and they said, how do I stop doing that? First of all, you should plan your trades you know, before you you uh, you know put them on, because if you do, you've got a better chance of uh, of working. You know, you've got to plan your strategy and sort of stick to it. The trades that you're losing, if you're looking, you're making a spot decision because you see something that you think is there, may or may not be there, but you think it's there, and that's what you want to be afraid of if you're looking at something like that. So, pay attention to that, folks. It's something that I think uh, is uh, relatively important, and it should be uh, something that. Uh, you know, you'll be able to, uh, you know, get a handle on over a period of time here. So let's uh, keep in mind that that's some of the things that we're watching today, uh, and they should be good. So we'll be right back, 877-927-6648. If you're not currently using the Taz Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The Taz Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, we're back, folks, and we're going to take a look here at the uh, Canadian dollar first. We've had a request to take a look at it. We'll get up here and just uh, see what's going on. All right, you can see here, uh, this is a long-term weekly in the Canadian. We've been a high as a 137 this year, a low of around 130, and we're trading in the lower end of that range right now at uh, 132 and change. Uh, right now, you could flip a coin and get it to go either way, but over the past uh, year and a half, we've had higher bottoms and higher tops so we've been in a pretty good uptrend here so I would look for a really good spot to buy this uh, somewhere. You know, we were looking to buy it down at that 131 level and had a really good rally there uh, right up to the 618 of the previous high that we made back in August. That was a 61% retracement of that move. Now, the next question that someone has asked us about is our good friend, the euro, which is one of our favorite things to trade. We'll get it up here. This is on a little shorter term time frame, folks. Let's just get this up here right now. So so that we'll be able to watch it. Here's where we were as we came in uh, last Friday. We were trading at 110.52. As most of you know, we got up to just about 111, and right now we're trading at 110.52. So it's gone nowhere this week. The fact that it held that level of 110, the low was actually 109.95, that is a very, very important point to look at. But the fact that the rally was not much of a rally, but it still had some type of a rally. The next one we have is the uh, British pound here. I want to get this up here to uh, show us, and you'll be able to see this. This is for our friend Bob, and you'll be able to look at it here. You see here that we had equal moves. Look at uh, look at 2009 between uh, between December and February, how we rallied, and look what happened between August and uh, September, uh, September and October. The exact same amount of the rally, folks. That's another principle that Dr. Andrew Lowe used in his book, that these markets, not only are they non-random, but, but they, uh, they, they, they repeat with regularity. And you can see, and this is where the harmonic numbers come from, but 
Do you see that repeat over and over again? Now, this is very bullish action. Now, so far uh, this week, we've sold off a little bit. We're trading just a tad below the 129 level. So we've been here for one, two, three, four, uh, five weeks with a very, very small correction. What I would be looking for would be a 382 retra uh, retracement on this, and that would come in around 127. That's about 150 points from where we are right now. And of course, one tweet from either Boris Johnson or Jeremy Corbyn would uh, get you there and more without any trouble at all. So watch that 127 level uh, in the British pound because you've had a very strong move. And in fact, it's much stronger. You can see the, the slope of the line uh, of this year is much stronger than the slope of the line of last year. And not only that, but it's taken, a, there's been virtually no correction. Whereas you can see in 2019, there was much more of a correction signaling that could be a lot more. But right now, pay attention to 2700. That would be your first spot to see if it's going to be some type of a, uh, you know, of, of a move that would at least uh, prepare us for, you know, something uh, pretty good. So we'll see what's going on. All right. Hopefully, we're going to have Tom, Hard Tom Hugard here at the break, which would be nice. Now, I did want to uh, mention the uh, one other one is about the crude oil, because we did something in crude oil. Very, very interesting. If you like crude oil, here is the and Of course, we do. If you look at this here, you'll notice that we hit, folks, <laughs> you see that number, 58.79? I That's actually off a little bit. That number should be 58.69. And last night... Believe it or not, the the uh, this is the February crude oil now. I believe, yeah, it it, it hit exactly 58.68, one tick off. It hasn't gone very much. It dropped about 40, 50 pips from there. But the fact that it hit that exact number means a very, very great. It means a lot deal if you're looking at Fibonacci numbers. And of course, we do look at Fibonacci numbers. So let's remember that that's very, very important in the long term of the things that we're looking at. All right. Any other questions? In any, oh, the hogs. The hogs continued their downward spiral, folks. Uh, this doesn't look very good for the hog market. And it will look good eventually, but not right now. In fact, we've got our eye on hogs. Uh, if we make a new low, uh, there's a really interesting pattern lining up in that, uh, the live hogs. It could bring a very, very good buying opportunity uh, with a very, very small risk. And that's the kind that we like to, to see the best. Also, the grains have weakened. Uh, well, not so much wheat, but the grains have weakened with the soybeans, uh, you know, going below the low of where we thought they were going to. But they were telling us it was going to do that because each day was f closing right on the low of the day. That's when it closes near the low of the day, it tells you there's more and more uh, selling coming in to see that. Oh, Victor Sperandio. Gosh, I haven't heard that name in 100 years. Thank you, David, for uh, putting that in. Uh, he was a really nice fellow, Victor. Met him once or twice. I've him twice over the years. But the key to trading success is emotional discipline. If intelligence were the key, there would be a lot more people making a lot more money. And boy, I can certainly tell you that. This is not a business for rocket science because the rocket scientists, they try to, you ask them what time it is, they want to show you how, how a watch is made. And you don't need that. You need to know two things. A, how much you're going to risk, and B, do you have the ability to execute the pattern when it's wrong? Don't worry about the ones that are right because they'll pay you off. But the ones that are wrong, those are the ones that bite you in the kabuki. So uh, pay attention to that, folks. It's going to be really interesting to see if uh, – you know, the real the real key to the success is not uh, being a, a mental giant. That's uh, that's absolutely for sure. I've met a lot of uh, very, very smart people. Doctors are, well, I'm not going to say anything about it, but doctors are really difficult to train because uh, the reason why is they think they're smarter than you are, which most of them are, and they have a lot of money to throw at the market, so they don't really, you know, worry about the research part of it. It's after they lose a lot of money that then they start to study, and uh, then they usually become pretty good. So we'll see. But remember, doctors have a big advantage because when you're trading, you need a lot of patience. And that's the one thing that doctors have is patience. My my uncle uh, had a brain, brain tumor. They gave him six months to live. He lived nine years after that, very healthily, as a matter of fact. And uh, he always said, you can always trust the doctors because right on the shingle, as you walk in the door, it says, 
XYZ uh, specialist, whatever it is, and it says practice of medicine. He said, Larry, he said, go to the sign that says XYZ doctor, and it doesn't say practice of medicine. It says, hey, I've stopped practicing, and I think I've got it right. That's the one that you want to go to. Same thing in trading, boys and girls. Same thing in trading. You got to have patience. You got to take responsibility for your trades, and you got to love this business because it changes all the time, but it'll keep you young. Uh, well, within limits, I guess, <laughs> but uh, it does offer something that not not many professions uh, really have, but it takes a while, you know, to get the job done. Okay, let's move on here. We're going to have a break here, and hopefully we're going to have Tom Hugard calling in at 930. If we don't, folks, it's because uh, he's very busy, and we'll have him at another time uh, next, you know, following early December when we uh, get back into action here. 877-927-6648. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. We have Trader Tom, Tom Hugard on the line. Tom, are you with us? I am. Good morning. Hey, good morning to you. We have a question from one of your fans over in Denmark. Uh, Elsie would like to know, do you trade the volatility index? No, I do not. 
Is there a reason why you don't trade the volatility index? Yes, there there is. The reason is that I am not good at it. Well, that's the. Let's move on to the next question. <laughs> you know, you know, like that. If you remember the old uh, movies with Clint Eastwood, uh, uh, is a uh, man has to know his, know his limitations, and that, if that's what you're supposed to do. By the way, we have several thank you notes here in the den today for your great book, and I hope you get it published like you're planning on it. We have one other question, Tom, and that is in one of your videos uh, that someone pulled off of YouTube, you talked about a trade that was set up where the DAX was up 9.9% and the FTSE was up 0.1%. And he interpreted it that you were buying the strongest of the two markets. Is that his correct interpretation? Well, actually, that opens an enormous can of worms because uh, it was you that taught me uh, that you should always bet if you have two correlated objects, two correlated assets, you should always bet uh, on, on the strongest of the two. So I, I really took that to heart because here in Europe we have several stock indices, um, but it, that represents different countries' economies. So you have the FTSE in England, you have the, the CAC in France, you have uh, the DAX in Germany. And my studies on, on covered a, 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 a quite a significant uh, correlation between them. But when the correlation went out of the window, i.e. one was significantly stronger than the other, then you had a very, very high hit rate by betting on the strong one, uh, on the long side, and going short uh, on the weaker one. It's, 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 it's obviously it's very logic. But, but another thing that that I noticed in my studies was that imagine that you have a top and the market uh, has, has pulled back. And, and this is the same in, in, in two correlated indices. If one of those stock indices manages to get above the prior top, but the secondary index doesn't manage to get a prior, uh, above the prior top, that is a position that I would, I would be all over on a short side. So okay. it, it, it's probably hard to imagine uh, because I haven't got any visual aid here. But 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 trading opposing uh, stock indices against each other is something that I've done with with a great deal of success. You certainly have had a great deal of success, my friend. There's nothing. To, do you have any words of wisdom? Another question that was being asked this morning about all these things that are coming out in the news, both in the UK, uh, about their election stuff and the stuff that's going on here in the US and the stuff that's going on in Hong Kong. And do, do you pay any attention to, to what happens to any of this news? I mean, how do you handle the news here is what the question is. Okay. Uh, so I have a, a little joke uh, that I read this morning on CNBC, and apparently a trade deal is very, very close. <laughs> <laughs> I, I find it a little funny because uh, I, as you know, I run a Telegram yeah. group where I post my yeah. live trades. And yeah. it's about a year ago that I posted a note from CNBC saying that a trade deal is really, really close. Yes, um, I know that. Yeah. How do I handle news? I handle news like everyone else does. I have been in big positions, and then Trump tweeted something, and I, I simply had to just lick my wounds for days because it hurt so badly. Yes. When you're trading relatively big size, it's not always that you're going to get stopped out at your desired exit point. So unfortunately, I don't have. Uh, it, it always seems to me that it's a positive. Uh, it, it's a positive curiosity, but I always seem to be on the wrong side of news. I'm rarely ever on the right side of a put, good piece of news. <laughs> Tom, the question, that one other question, these are very good, very leading, one question leads to another. Uh, what is the worst slippage that you can remember uh, that you had on a, on a trade? I mean, how much did it gap above uh, or below your price to, to get your fill? How much of a hickey did you have to take? Okay, um, that's very easy to answer because it's one of those that um, that you remember. You. <laughs> it's a bit like asking your favorite girl up for a dance, and then she says, "I would never dream of dancing with someone like you." That was during 2015 when the Greek debt crisis was raging, and I had taken a position that I had foolishly run over the weekend. And on that Monday morning, the market got 500 points on the wrong side, and I got out at the very, very high take. I mean, it, 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 I literally created the, the, the top uh, for the day on my short position. Wow. How long did it take you to recover from that? I mean, not money-wise, <laughs> but, the, but the emotion part yeah. of it. 
emotionally, I was over in a matter of, of, of minutes, financially, several months. Yeah. Yeah, wow, wow, that's pretty good. Any any uh, words of wisdom you'd like to impart with our folks today? And also, sure. if they can get the book by just going to uh, Trader uh, Dub, uh, tr uh, Tom. He hello, Go. no, it's, it's hello. Uh, uh, just a, a quick word. I, I've written a book about the psychology of 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 a of a high stake trader, and I, I'm giving it away for free at the moment because it's still a working title. Although I have found a publisher for it, so that's great news. But if people want a copy of it, I'm more than happy to give it to you for free. And it's hello at tradertom.com. And yeah, I, I do have a, a little word to the wise, and that is the, you know, uh, there came a point in my development as a trader where I realized that I didn't need any more technical analysis. What I really needed to do was to sit down and spend just as much time on, on the mental part rather than just the charts, charts, charts. Because honestly, I don't think charts is, the, is, is the what's going to make you money. I just don't believe that anymore. I have to believe that too. And Mark Douglas, uh, you know, tried to, you know, in, put it into my brain after 30 years. It finally got in. But, uh, you know, he said it's 85% mental. And I think he was about 10% off. I think it's 95% mental. Because if you can get that cycle right, uh, what you think you should do, you've pretty much got a big edge uh, on the market. What is your, uh, someone's asking a question. I don't know if you want to answer this or not. Is there any feeling on what you think is going to happen with the stock indices here in the United States? States uh, in the coming uh, week or so? Uh, yeah, I, I do have a, a, a strong feeling. And uh, unfortunately, I think I'm clouded by my opinion. I, I, I want to short the market, but I, I look at the chart. I'm thinking, why do I want to short this? And I'll tell you why I want to short it, because I find that there's so much uncertainty. But I've been in situations like this before where my brain is saying one thing and my gut is saying another thing. And at times like that, I prefer just to trade uh, smaller size and be, oh. be more nimble, as Art Cashin would often say in his newsletter, yeah. you know, stay very, very nimble. Yeah. Um, but I, I don't really see a reason for being negative. It's certainly not yeah. in the charts, that's for sure. Yeah. Wow, that's really great, being nimble. I really like that. And of course, I uh, I knew Art. And, well, I still know Art, so he's a super guy. Uh, anyway, listen, yeah. Tom, I know you're real busy today, but thank you for coming on. And uh, next week, uh, we're going to be taking some time off for the holidays. And maybe after uh, start of December, we'll have you back on and uh, do another segment with you, if you don't mind. Yes. Is that your, your Thanksgiving Yes, Thanksgiving is next Thursday. In fact, the day before Thanksgiving is the most bullish day of the year in the stock market, going back uh, 160 years, I believe. It's about a 75% chance. Do you know what the chance. second most positive five-day streak is in the entire calendar year? It Probably is the January period 1st. after Christmas. Yeah, yeah, that's I always figure something like that. <laughs> happy uh, happy hey, uh, Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving to everyone listening. Thank you very much, Tom. Tom Hugard. Thank you. TraderTom.com. We'll be right back, folks. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom 
Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Trading Hour with Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Nick. <laughs> okay, folks, we're back, and uh, we've had a question or a uh, opportunity to talk about the hogs for just a minute because I mentioned them a little bit earlier. Uh, these are the Christmas hogs that we're looking at. Uh, it says the uh, the best indicator for all markets is geometry. I have to agree with that. Uh, remember, geometry is uh, right behind mathematics. That is what uh, Albert Einstein said, uh, that before God was numbers and the ratios come before the patterns. Here's the December hogs. We're almost uh, got a high probability of making a double bottom down there, folks, at around 58 is my guess, but uh, I would take a look at it. Now, we're coming into the peak season for pork, you know, with uh, the people buy hams and stuff. So it's going to be interesting to see what the demand is here because cattle have uh, held up incredibly well. So we'll watch to see uh, how these things are going. Uh, Marshall makes a comment here uh, about the sacred geometry. And if you really would like to have a fabulous book about sacred geometry and how it fits into the universe, it's none other than John Michel, M-I-C-H-E-L, The Dimensions of Paradise. That is that book. If that book doesn't put goosebumps on you, go back to looking at moving averages because that doggone book has really got some incredible stuff about uh, where this geometry comes in, not just, uh, you know, in our planet, but in the solar system and all this stuff is how it fits together. So it's, uh, this is not by accident, folks, all this stuff uh, that's going on. Like Einstein said, God does not roll dice with the universe. And he also said, before God, was numbers. So he was a pretty smart dude. Anyway, let's move on. Hold it. Tom is giving me a little tweet in here. And uh, I'll say, uh, yeah, that would be great. Okay, this is good. We're going to be going over there in the springtime. We'll be able to say the name of the book again is, uh, I'll write it in here, okay? It's uh, the author. It, you can get it real easy. It's on, uh, he's a uh, English author. I went over there to hear him once. Let me see. H. C H E L, John Michelle, and it's called the I don't know how to spell dimensions. Dimensions of Paradise. I'll, I'll misspell dimensions, but it's the Dimensions of Paradise by John Michelle. He's wrote a whole. He's wrote, he's wrote a lot of books because he came over and studied at the. Uh, Manley Hall Institute, where he got some of the ideas for this book. And another great book, of course, uh, oh, Bitcoin. No, we haven't, but we will. I think I still have the bid up here. Uh, you know, I don't anymore, I think, because I'm getting ready to uh, get the letter for next week out to get it early. But uh, Bitcoin is down below that 7,900 level, folks. That is not a good sign. That tells us that we're most probably getting ready to uh, look at something a little bit nasty possibly so let's uh let's keep that in mind as we look at uh 
as we look at these things un unfolding here here this morning. So we'll just keep uh, keep an eye on that. The other one that's on our watch list besides the, the besides the hogs uh, from the futures market standpoint, of course, uh, is the uh, natural gas, and we want to get that one back up here because we certainly have a. Uh, really strong interest in it. Let's get this up here right now because let's one second. Here is I'll take care of the platinum in one second, Ruby. Uh, uh, yes, I believe I believe we're going to 850 in the platinum. Let's do this one first for natural gas. As you can see here, right now we're trading it around. We're making a little retracement this morning here uh, of that old high at uh, 262. And I still, if you add that 262, that takes us right down into that gap. See, that gap fills in natural gas at 238. And that's where we are, which, where there's a possibility that's where we're going to get to. We're in the midst of a three-day rally here, much like we've had before. So just pay attention to it. It might not happen that way, but that's the way it looks like. Okay, the next one we want to, there, there it is, Dimensions of Paradise by Marshall uh, brings it in here, The Geometry and Ancients and Heavenly. That's a fabulous book, folks. It really is. It's just, uh, it's really, really good. I don't even know how much it costs, but uh, it's cheap no matter what it is because it's a great book about the uh, you know geometry of everything now it's very little about the markets but uh, a lot of stuff about some of the other things you know that we wanted to take a, a quick look at all right let's take a quick look at the old platinum for uh, ruby and you'll see here i believe we've had this really let's get this up here so you'll be able to see it. You'll notice here, twelve dollars and thirty-nine cents. Shut the front door. Okay, we got a caller from uh, New Jersey. Victor, are you there? I'm just. Uh, How are you? Crazy. Yeah. What can yeah. I? What can I? Yeah. Where would you buy Bitcoin at? Oh, I would wait. The Bitcoin is in a downward move. I think we're going to make new lows over this last run, which is going to be under 6,000. So I see no reason really? to uh, be a buyer here of Bitcoin at all. No, it doesn't look very good. It had a really good chance to go through when we were up at 10,000, and it gave it up, and now it's in a downward spiral. So I wouldn't touch it here. Uh, I would wait. No, no pattern at all, all right. for me to buy it. All right. Thank you. Bye. You bet. Thanks for calling in, Victor. Okay, let's take a look at the platinum for Ruby. You'll notice that we had that high up there at four digits, 1,000. We came down to uh, 875. We rallied up to the 707, which was at 860. Now, the difference between 707 and 0.618 is very, very small for trading purposes. And then, of course, the ABCD on this, you go from 1,000 down to 880. You add those two together, and then you subtract 960 and bada bing, bada boom. Boom, it's going to take you to 845 to 835. Well, I'd say roughing out 840, which is the 838 is the 78% retracement of that whole move from June. See, right now we've just hit the 61% retracement. But folks, look at this. We've rallied for five days and have gone nowhere. This is not a this is not a bullish sign. We've said that when we're looking at the gold, too. So we'll be able to watch this. Uh, as we watch this, it's very, very important. It's the only thing uh, what is going on. Yes, uh, Maria is talking about the volatility is uh, slowing down. But, folks, the reason why volatility is slowing down is at the top of the hill. And once it starts downhill, watch that volatility rock and roll because it pops up and it's ready to go. So pay close attention to that volatility, folks, because uh, uh, there's a lot of complacency out in the market. I see it in you know, the news. You see it quite a bit. No matter what the news says, the market goes higher. That happens in bull markets, folks. I mean, they markets climb a wall of worry, and they've certainly been doing that. This is the first week. You know, since Monday, you know, we had all those patterns, and we haven't gone down very much. What are we down? What uh, We're down 20 handles or so in the S&P. Uh, yeah, we're down, let's see, 20. Yeah, we're down, we're down 25 handles. That's nothing. You know, I mean, it really is nothing. So uh, it's going to be interesting when it finally does work. And the next week is one of the least vo volume weeks. of. The, it is the least volume week of the whole year because they do nothing, virtually nothing on Wednesday and zero on Thursday and almost zero on Friday. Well, there's more people come in on Friday. But those three days, you know, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday next week, they, they can scratch those off the map. And uh, but anyway, remember the day after thanks the day after the day before the holiday the day before the holiday which is wednesday is one of the most bullish days of the year so uh watch that
and we'll go up here. We've got to take a little break here, and we'll come back. And uh, I wanted to uh, talk just a tiny bit more uh, about one other market that uh, is interesting to us in the coming months, and that'll be something that I think will be uh, interesting to everyone. So we'll be right back, 877-927-6648. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 six and three months timer digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well the fact is markets can be timed and i'll teach you the exact set of tools that i use that has transformed me into one of the best at what i do sign up for mastering probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where i take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. sign up today if you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and I wanted to bring one chart to your attention here today. And We were talking about it a little bit earlier, and that is the crude oil chart. And I reminded you that uh, we had missed that uh, FIB number by one tick at 58.79, and by golly, we hit 57.76 since the show started, and we've already backed off 58.76. We've already backed off about 40 pips from that level, so I would consider that as a complete FIB Fibonacci number there at 58.76. So uh, for what it's worth, it's spot on. So we'll see whether it's going to hold up or not. So keep in mind that sometimes 
times they fail, but uh, these numbers are pretty good overall. Now, remember, uh, next week is going to be holiday here in old Tucson, Arizona. I'll be back in the early December, and I want to wish everybody a wonderful Thanksgiving and everything, and have a great time. We'll be watching these markets. Uh, newsletter and the 24-7 uh, will go on as, uh, as, as usual. It doesn't take me very long to do that. It does take me quite a while to get the radio show up, so it'll be quite a break. I won't be around very much for sure, but uh, I'll be ready to go here uh, early December, and we'll see how things unfold. The gold must hold is uh, 1460, folks. We're trading at 1465 this morning. Uh, it's not acting very good because we didn't bounce very much. Uh, and every bounce that we've had has been repelled. So last night's high was exactly 78% of the previous high. So that's, uh, you know, that's another one to, to keep in mind. So be sure to take care of some poor people over the holidays, folks. There's a lot of people out there struggling, as you see in the news. And do what you can for those that don't have very much, because we're blessed. And you want to share a little bit of that blessing because you ain't going to be able to take it with you. I can promise you that, Bubba's. There's no way, no way you're going to take it with you. So enjoy it while you can. And uh, be sure that uh, you all make it back on time and travel safe if you have travel. So live every day in an attitude of gratitude. And may God bless.